Okay, let's talk about ventilation then. So, ventilation is to um, maintain concentration gradients. That's the purpose of it. Don't care what organism you're in. Maintains a concentration gradient at the gas exchange surface. And how is it doing that? It's delivering fresh oxygen in your respiratory medium, whatever it is, air or water. And it's removing carbon dioxide. So you're talking about moving your respiratory medium across that gas exchange surface. So, let's just look at our pictures again. So here's my shark. And here is my fish. And you can see that this blue arrow shows the flow of water. So the shark is effectively swimming with its mouth open. The water, therefore, as, it's, as the shark's swimming, is moving into its mouth and over its gills and out through these gill slits here down the side. So the water coming in has got lots of oxygen in it and the water leaving from the gills has had some of that oxygen removed and is oxygen depleted as it leaves the shark. So sharks effectively need to keep swimming um, and keep their mouths open in order to do this. Bony fish have a slightly um, more sophisticated method. So you'll have noticed, um, and if you haven't noticed, Go to an aquarium, go and have a look at a goldfish swimming around in a tank. Fish, as they move around, are constantly opening their mouths and closing them, opening their mouths and closing them. So, why are they doing that? Notice again, we've got a one-way flow of water. It's going in through the mouth, over the gills, out through the operculum. So that's slightly more complicated, so it's not just got a hole, the gill slits, to go through. It's going into the mouth, it's being then forced back over the gills and out through the operculum. So we need to know how that happens. So, we're looking here at bony fish. So how do they get the water into the mouth in the first place? Well clearly the mouth has got to be open. And the floor of the buccal cavity, so that's the mouth cavity. Is lowered. Now what that means is that the pressure in the buccal cavity, because you've got a big volume, is low. So large volume. low pressure and water flows in. Are you seeing some similarities now with the way that humans do it? We're talking about volume and pressure changes. The next thing the fish needs to do is to force that water in its mouth back over its gills. So it then closes its mouth and raises the floor of the buccal cavity so that the volume is lower, pressure is higher. This causes the water, this 
forced. over the gills and then we need to increase the pressure in the opercular cavity so the opercular cavity pressure increases The operculum opens and water is forced out. And again, this is one way flow. And it's quite hard to do because of the density of the medium. So I thought just to finish this, we'd just have a look at a bit of a graph. Ooh, we do all of our graphs. So, here's a graph to show the pressures in the buccal cavity and the opercular cavity and compared to the pressure of the water, which would be zero. So, pressure in the buccal cavity, this is going up here because it's got its mouth shut and it's raised the floor of the buccal cavity. So this bit here is the uh, water pushed over the gills. Notice that we've now had a pressure in the buccal cav in the opercular cavity. So as the water flows into the opercular cavity. going to raise the pressure and here we've got the water leaving it. So the pressure goes down. So this is the pressure in the buccal cavity while it's being pushed back over the gills. When the buccal cavity pressure is low, so down at this bottom bit of the graph, here and underneath the water, this is water moving into the buccal cavity. So the pressure is lower in the buccal cavity than it is in the water and the water will move in. So here we've got the mouth open and the floor lowered. So what else might you be asked to do with this graph? You might be asked to calculate the ventilation rate because you've got time here. So you could calculate a rate from that by doing 60 seconds, one minute, over the time for one cycle. So again, you're looking for a repeating pattern. So 60 over 0.6 to give whatever that gives. I'm thinking I should be able to do that in my head and it's probably a hundred or something, but I really can't. Um, you've got pressure differences, they might ask you for a percentage increase perhaps, percentage decrease. And the other thing that this shows is evidence that the water is being pushed from the buccal cavity into the opercular cavity because the pressure goes up first in the buccal cavity and next into the opercular cavity. So this gives us evidence for our one-way flow. So, you need to know those ventilation movements, remembering that concentration gradients are down to two things going on, ventilation and blood flow. And we're going to look at blood flow next.